So, uh, what are the success points of classical free electron theory of metals? We'll see today, and also the failure points. So, basically, this classical free electron theory assumes the random motion of the electrons in the metal. Electrons are considered as gas, so that's why the electron gas is used as a term for the explanation of moment of electrons. So what it explains, the free electron theory of metals, it successfully explains the Ohm's law. It verifies Ohm's law, that is V equal to IR. That verification it does and it is based on Ohm's law. It derives widman frank law. Secondly, it proves the widman frank law, that is thermal conductivity to the electrical conductivity ratio is directly proportional to temperature T. So that is proved by free electron theory of metals. Then it explains electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. It successfully explains the electrical and thermal conductivity of metals. Successfully we have derived the expression for electrical conductivity and thermal conductivity in case of metals using the free electron theory of metals. That derivation we have done thoroughly and also I have shared the notes in the Google Classroom. You can go through that. Fourth point is it explains optical properties of the metals. So it explains the optical properties of the metal, metals successfully. So these are the uh, main points which are the success points of classical free electron theory of metals. But there are more failure points compared to the success points. That's why uh, more uh, precisely the classical free electron theory fails to explain many phenomena and many experimental observations. That's why it fails and we have to use the summer field theory in order to understand the properties of the metal properly. So what are the failure points? We'll consider one by one. So what are the limitations of the free electron theory? So number one, it does not give the satisfactory explanation as to why certain metals like copper and silver have high conductivity. So that cannot be explained by this free electron theory of metals. So why the copper, silver, they have higher conductivity compared to the other metals? Because it assumes the free electrons are the contributory particles for the conduction. So all the metals have free electrons, but among them, some metals have higher conductivity and some have lower conductivity. So that cannot be explained by this free electron theory of metals. Second point, it is unable to explain adequately the variation of resistance of pure metals at the temperature of liquid helium. Basically, at low temperature, the temperature of liquid helium means it is very, very low temperature. At low temperature, experimentally, it is observed that the resistance of the metal becomes very, very small. So that is the phenomenon of superconductivity. Okay. So such a variation of resistance at a low temperature cannot be explained by this free electron theory of metal. It only gives the conductivity of the metal and thermal conductivity of the metal, but the variation of resistance cannot be explained by this theory. That is one important point. Then according to the free electron theory, the specific heat of the metals is given by Cv is equal to three by two R. So it says that specific heat is constant and it is same for all the metals where R is the gas constant. So Cv is equal to three by two R. That is proved by free electron theory. And this is called as Dulong and Petit's law. This is a classical law. Okay, so as per this equation, Cv, that is specific heat of the metal is independent of temperature and it is constant and same for all the metals. But it is observed that experimentally, Cv is observed to be directly proportional to temperature. So as the temperature increases, the specific heat of the metal also going to increase. So there is a discrepancy between this theoretical specific heat explanation and experimental observation, okay? So there is no perfect agreement between these two. That's why here in the explanation of the specific heat, the free electron theory fails. Fourth point, the mean free, free, free path of the free electron calculated using free electron theory of metals is found to be very much less compared to the experimentally observed mean free path. 
so there is a formula for lambda in terms of thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity so lambda is mean free path the value of mean free path calculated using free electron theory is observed to be very much lesser compared to the experimental observations so there is a uh, disagreement in the theoretical calculation of mean free path and the experimental value of mean free path so here this free, free electron theory fails so okay, okay next fifth one sorry temperature dependence of electron on temperature okay so temperature dependence of uh, electrical conductivity that cannot be explained using this free electron theory of metals so according to classical free electron theory the electrical conductivity of metal is given by this sigma is equal to n e square to divided by m okay basically we have to find out how does this electrical conductivity depend on temperature okay that we have to find so now substitute this to is equal to lambda by v so you substitute to is equal to lambda by v you will get sigma is equal to n e square lambda divided by m into v so to is a time relaxation time is equal to mean free path divided by velocity so it is just like velocity equal to distance by time that is the basic expression so time will be equal to distance divided by velocity that is how you can get the expression for relaxation time substitute here you will get sigma is equal to n e square lambda by mv but according to classical theory the kinetic energy half mv square is equal to 3 by 2 kbt where kb is the boltzmann constant t is the temperature this is how we can introduce the temperature term in the sigma expression now according to this expression so v will be so 2 to gets cancelled that's why v will be square root of 3 kbt by m so this implies that velocity of the electron is directly proportional to square root of the temperature okay so v is directly proportional to square root of temperature so v is in the denominator in this expression here therefore sigma will be directly proportional to 1 by root t so it says that electrical conductivity of the metal is inversely proportional to square root of the absolute temperature that is the point explained by free electron theory but experimentally what is observed but experimentally it is observed that a sigma is directly proportional to 1 by t so there is a discrepancy according to free electron theory electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to square root of temperature but experimentally it is observed that electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to temperature so this cannot be explained by free electron theory so there is a disagreement between these two okay so therefore electron free electron theory is not in agreement with the experimental observation this is the fifth point next sixth point is dependence of electrical conductivity on electron concentration okay so let us see how electrical conductivity depends on electron concentration according to free electron theory as per classical free electron theory the electrical conductivity of metals is given by sigma is equal to n e square to divided by m that expression you know so according to this relation sigma is directly proportional to n what is n here n is the electron concentration or number of electrons per unit volume of the metal so n represents free electrons okay so hence according to classical free electron theory bivalent and trivalent metals should possess much higher electrical conductivity than monovalent metals okay what is this statement says according to this expression sigma is directly proportional to n where n is the number of free electrons the metal which is bivalent bivalent means which is having two valence electron can contribute two electrons for the conduction so each atom contribute two electrons trivalent means each atom contribute three electrons okay so the number of atoms in one 
mole is same whether it is bivalent or trivalent but number of electrons must be more okay free electron jaasti irbekanta bivalent matte trivalent metals enagirthade adu free electron jaasti contribute madbeku because of that they should possess higher conductivity compared to the monovalent metals where monovalent metal atom can contribute only one electron for the conduction but experimental observation is noticed that the monovalent elements element metals like copper silver are more conducting than zinc and aluminum so zinc is a bivalent aluminum is a trivalent but compared to these two the monovalent metals have higher conductivity copper and silver have higher conductivity where where they are monovalent okay so according to this theory yav to higher valency irutade adu good conductor agirbeku andre higher conductivity irbeku but experimentally that is opposite monovalent elements have higher conductivity okay that is how this cannot explain the prediction of classical free electron theory that sigma is directly proportional to n does not always hold good therefore the classical free electron theory fails to explain the dependence of sigma on n so this cannot explain this sigma and its dependence on the free electrons number of free electrons okay this is the sixth point and seventh point is estimation of lorange number so according to free electron theory the lorange number predicted in wedman friend law is l is equal to 3 kb square by 2 e square and this we have obtained in the previous class so if you take the ratio of thermal conductivity divided by sigma electrical conductivity we will get some l into t where l is having the expression 3 kb square divided by 2 e square okay if you calculate this value it comes out to be 1.11 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt per watt omega per kelvin square but experimentally the ratio of k to sigma gives some different result and the value of lorange number was experimentally observed which is equal to 2.44 into 10 to the power minus 8 watt omega per kelvin square so there is a huge difference almost it is two times greater the experimental value of lorange number is two times greater than the lorange number predicted in free electron theory so there is a difference so this discrepancy cannot be explained by free electron theory of metals okay so these are the failure points so that's why free electron theory only explains some uh, properties of the metal but not all ella properties na explain madodilla it can explain some of the properties okay so just i will uh, recall so these are the success points it explains ohms law it explains the widman friend law it explains electrical and thermal conductivity of metals and it explains optical properties coming to the limitations number 1 it does not gives explanation about the conductivity of metal certain metals have higher conductivity that cannot be explained by free electron theory second is why the resistance is going to vary at the low temperature this phenomena cannot be explained by free electron theory that is the phenomena of superconductivity cannot be explained using this theory then according to free electron theory the specific heat is independent of temperature but experimentally specific heat is dependent on temperature it is directly proportional to temperature so there is a disagreement fourth point is the dis- disagreement in the calculated mean free path and experimentally observed mean free path okay they are not uh, comparable there is a very uh, much less value is observed in free electron theory fifth point is temperature dependence of electrical conductivity it is observed that electrical conductivity is inversely proportional to square root of t according to free electron theory but experimentally sigma is inversely proportional to absolute temperature so there is a disagreement next sixth point dependence of electrical conductivity on electron concentration according to free electron theory electrical conductivity sigma is directly proportional to number of free electrons 
but experimentally it is observed that the monovalent elements such as copper and silver have higher conductivity compared to the bivalent and trivalent metals so this disagreement cannot be explained using free electron theory and seventh one is the disagreement between the value of lorange number theoretically predicted using free electron theory and experimentally observed value there is a huge difference in the lorange number and this is the actual lorange number 2.44 into 10 to the power minus 8 is the so uh, si units is the actual lorange number but free electron theory predicts the lower value of the lorange number so these are the failures of the free electron theory